everybody, it's three o'clock. Welcome to the Barkley Happy Hour. If you're watching this, you are watching um, live on the Irvine Barkley's Instagram channel. And today we are going to be chatting with one of our guest performers for next week. We're so excited. Um, it is a Grammy winning, Emmy nominated jazz musician. And I'm going to add him to our con now. Hello, let me hype you up, Mr. Beasley, John. Um, I am Marcy Taylor for Irvine Barclay Theater, and I am here with our exciting performer next week, the acclaimed jazz musician, pianist, composer, arranger, and like I mentioned earlier, he has won a Grammy and has been nominated multiple times. It's the one, the only, taking a break from his tour, I guess, because he's in LA, John Beasley, hi. Hi, Marcy. Hi, everybody. Can you Hello. Give me one minute while I shut these these windows? So I think I think that they might look a little bit better. Just give me no one worries. Second. Go for I it. So yeah. Okay. So John Beasley is our guest today. He is a musician, and if you love jazz, then you have to know John, right? And we're so excited because he will be performing with his Monkestra on June 9th here at the Irvine Barclay Theater in Orange County, California. Um, hello, everybody joining in. I believe these are fans of John Beasley from around the world. Look at this. Genoa. I'm friends. This is friends. This is like locker room. Nice. I, see. <laughs> I see. Gina, I see. Let's see. Yes, you are around, around the world. Because, like, I think last week we, I was emailing you, you had performed somewhere else again, right? Where you, where was your last performance? Uh, I just came back from Portugal, actually, where I was on a record. Um, before that, I was in, um, I was in Holland working with the Metropole Orchestra. Um, wow. doing, conducting a little playing. It was nice. It's really fun. It was a great band. Was it, was it fun to um, get back out there performing in front of people? It is. It is. You know, um, we, we, the silence really gave us a chance to really realize why we started playing music in the first place, and and um, and then it dawned it dawns on one that it really takes the audience, especially in jazz musician music, to to uh, to make it complete complete whole because it's improvised. We're making this up in the moment, and wow. sure musicians and then we did these streaming concerts and it was fine but the second half of that equation is the audience you know and and feeling their presence so it was really missed and and of course the immediate feedback and instant gratification and, and all that you know oh, yeah I, I can't imagine being a performer um, over the last two years and not being able to perform. I mean, you're in your living room, you can play and we can stream. And I mentioned that because this concert that you're doing with us at the Irvine Barclay with Monkestra was actually supposed to happen in 2020. Can you walk us through that? It, it was connected to your latest album then. So maybe you can talk to us about the Monkestra trilogy of albums. Well, we had a, a, a record that was, I'm going to try to fix this. There we, we go. Had, that's there we go. We had a record, uh, well, our, our latest record, Monkish Replaced John, our third record uh, okay. from records, um, came out in August of 2020. And we had the Hollywood Bowl uh, lined up. We had concerts all over the world lined up. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. So, um, uh, then I think we got rebooked for 2021 and we had a spike and, and that did well. So here we are now in 2022 and, and uh, it's worth the wait for us as a band to, to get together and play. For, and um, hopefully it's, it's worth, worth it for the audience. You know? How I, exciting. And in that time, that's when you got the Grammy nod, right? For Donna Lee. From the... the yeah, from our record, and it's the arrangement I did on Don, on Donna Lee, Charlie, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll play that um, on the gig next week as well. 
I've been listening to it and then I, I listened to the original just trying to see like your take on it. It's very interesting. So everybody that wants to hear that, you can search for it. It's it's online, you know, it's available. But of course, it's going to be so different watching you live with your orchestra or your band. Are these people you regularly play with or only when you do the Monkestra project? Uh, both. Um, I mean, I work a lot with the drummer, Terry Young Gully on different projects. Bob Shepard I've, I've worked with for a long time, you know, 30 years maybe, something like that. But this band is is unique in a big band is that, you know, it's it's really the core guys that even started the band. You know, there's wow. only two or three other guys that are, are, are women that are, are, are new to the band. Um, yeah, very lucky to have this core band. And throughout the evolution of these records that we've done and performances, you know, the, the band has really evolved and, and, and I've started writing for particular oh, people. You know, which How exciting. Used to be a, a normal thing with big bands. You, right, you, right. You score, you could see Duke, Duke Ellington scores and it would have, you know, Harry, meaning Harry, and, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy and stuff. They have people's names instead of their instruments. So, because oh, um, you're like writing particularly for that musician is what you're saying. Not just not just instruments, personalities. Wow. So, here's we've got to know each other. Um, we've got this crazy kind of funky blend that we do, um, and uh, that's that's unique, I think, in in big bands these days. Yes, this. So it's almost like. Um, You've come back full circle, right? So why don't we walk us back for those who are not familiar with how you started, because I know you started very young playing with Miles Davis and everything. Like, were you, did you start out as a pianist? How did it begin? Both my parents are music, music, musicians, but also mm -hmm. music educators. And my dad uh, teaching in Denton, Texas, at the University of North Texas, which mm -hmm. was... Uh, one of the first places you could get a degree in jazz education. Wow. And he was doing gigs in Dallas and Fort Worth and, and teaching. And at that at one point, I think they had 11 big bands at that school. It was this wow. huge. So my introduction was, you know, uh, after Jimi Hendrix and, you know, Earth, Wind & Fire was the big band thing. And I really wanted to be an arranger. I, I got infatuated with Thad Jones and Mel Lewis mm -hmm. and... Uh, Jones and people like this, and I really wanted to do that. So I got started playing piano, but also really wanted to be an arranger. And then when I moved uh, away and started my career, it was it was more piano, and uh, became known more of as a pianist and a writer. Um, and then, you know, uh, six, seven, eight years ago, I don't know how long ago it was, I think it was 20, 2014, we started this <laughs> band. And uh -huh. it, big bands and and that's that's the story yeah i'm excited the return of the big band sound you know um it's a uh, something different and it's exciting that the younger generation gets to see it because like your albums are on spotify you know they're all looking at youtube and i did notice like um, younger people having an appreciation, a renewed appreciation for jazz have you noticed that like maybe in your audience there's more people playing jazz now than ever because of jazz schools. I've seen, I've, I've gone to conventions uh, for young musicians where there, there's junior high school jazz bands. So, and it's always been a place where you learned how uh, to play with each other, you know, a big band playing to have to play, to play tight and play in rhythm together. And mm -hmm. also, uh, for young people that are not jocks per se, it's a place to fit in and have this community at school. Um, so uh, it's it's a great place to, to 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 learn and to play together, like I said. But also, um, there's more people than ever playing jazz. I mean, okay. it's really crazy. There's more jazz schools. All the high schools are doing it, and so. Um, yeah, and there's some incredible talent out there. You know, That's so, so exciting. 
We're in a good place for the future. Does it inspire you? Have you written a um, new album since the last Monkestra album that came out in 2020? Um, I have a record that came out last last August 2021 uh, with the SWR jazz band and uh, the jazz orchestra out of Stuttgart, Germany. It's a radio orchestra and it's a tribute to Charlie Parker that I did with my partner. And it features uh, Charles McPherson, Chris Potter, Tia Fuller, Joe Lovano, uh, Pedro Martinez, great uh, Congero. Um, yeah, that, that, that's been fun. Um, the other things I'm doing is I'm, I'm writing, um, I'm preparing for a concert in Europe this in a couple of weeks uh, wow. with Wayne Shorter for his, uh, he had, he's composed a symphonic jazz piece and we're going to play it with the Bielefeld for harmonic. But the first half of the program, um, I'm going to arrange uh, a bunch of Wayne Shorter classic tunes from Weather Report to, to Art Blakey to Miles Davis um, for symphony orchestra. So that's that, oh, that should be your next show at <laughs> at the Barclay. Let's get uh, this one done, and then you maybe play with the Philharmonic Society of Orange County, and you know, there that would be so exciting. Uh, I'm all yours, right? I'm putting it out there. We're putting it out there in the universe. But first, we have the show that really is a makeup show for two years ago, and that it's so crazy. It's like you're making up for lost time more than anything two albums in two years a world tour <laughs> and you've also written music for television and movies and stuff have you are you working on anything in that field right now no not at the moment um last year we we did the the premiere episode of bosch mm -hmm. uh, oh that's worked on that cool yeah, yeah. So we we played a New Year's Eve scene and you know did a couple of original pieces. Uh, that was fun. Um, you know, I'm, uh, there is a movie down the pike, but I don't know what it is yet. We'll we'll see uh, we'll see what happens with that. You know, but I always I always love writing and and playing on film. There's something about being inspired by visuals. You mm -hmm. know, and drama. A lot of time I'll I'll, I'll imagine stuff like that when I'm writing for the band, for Monkestra, you know, uh, some of our, some of our stuff is very cinematic in that way. Um, right. You know, yeah, very I love that. Cool. I'm going to take a minute to see all these people that are watching us. Cosmo Lieberman, Mommy Bella, uh, Stren Ed Veronica, Cupid Crime by Samar. Um, Ian Killingsworth, Instatrini Girl, says Monkestra is a multi-generational band with young cats to very seasoned musicians. Um, Paolo Mauta Pereira, Kevin Wanalux, Jorge Wendela, Lineth 562 Deej, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for us, just type it out and we can ask. We have John Beasley, a foremost jazz musician, right here. So if you have any questions, if you are a musician yourself and you have something to ask, uh, please do. Okay, so what else can I ask you? The trilogy, so you had three albums. Did they come out like in succession? And were they all called Monkestra? Or, or what was the concept of the trilogy? Well, we start out playing all the, monk, all the music of Thelonious Monk. Reimagined. That's uh, why the name. <laughs> played Monkestra and a jazz orchestra. So, you know, Monkestra. Mm -hmm. We start, our first record came out in 2016. Mm. Or something, came out in 2017. And they're very easy to remember the names of the titles. It's Monkestra Volume 1, Monkestra Volume 2. Um, the second one came out uh, at the same time as Monk's Centennial. Uh, that was 20, 2017, I believe. And then uh, the third record, we started stretching out and was able to to, uh, to write some um, some of my own music in there, some original music. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Also, some um, uh, there's a Duke Ellington piece in there, the Charlie Parker piece, Donna Lee. Uh, wrote one piece for Hugh Masakea, who I'd gotten to know over over the years. That features Hubert Laws. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's well, our. Coming, 
album. So they're on the album. They play as well. You have guests on the album. Yeah. Okay, so each album, I just want to share a little fun fact that each of those three albums won two Grammy, Grammy nominations. And then Donna Lee, which is on the third album, actually won. Yay! <laughs> Is that, I'm just curious, because you've been nominated and awarded, is that something you're conscious of when you're putting a record out? No, no, I not when I'm writing or, or putting a record together. After the fact, you know, if, you know, after you submit it uh, to the mm -hmm. Grammy and you're, you're, you're hoping that people have heard it and enjoyed it yeah. enough to nominate it, you know, that's, that's a, that's a big thrill because, you know, the Grammys are not the American Music Awards. They're different in that it's a guild and uh, yeah, a recording artist or an engineer or somebody in the in recording business uh, and an artist uh, to, to vote, you know. Um, they're not public awards. So, you know, to have that, that recognition from your peers is, is pretty special. Grammys wow. is good. Very, very cool. I wonder what your next um, goal is. Do you have anything like artistically and creatively? What do you think you want to work on next? Well, my dance card is pretty full. I'm, I'm, I'm working on this. <laughs> I'm still an arrangement or two away from this Wayne Shorter concert. Mm -hmm. And I had the first rehearsal is June 14th. So I'm a little busy doing that. After that, I, I, I'm going to go on the road with Diane Rees in Europe for a couple of weeks. And then I have a new project, um, a trio project, mm -hmm. two friends of mine from Cuba, um, Horacio El Negro um, Hernandez, great drummer, and a bassist named Jose Gola. And uh, we're going to tour Europe uh, as a trio, but Afro-Cuban fusion. So it's all going to be electron, electric bass, wow. synthesized drums. That's like uh, so opposite or so different from the big band. Uh, concept. Not really. Not really. I mean, it's it's the same thing, but it'll feel different. Three people and all that stuff. Um, uh -huh. How did you get into the Afro-Cuban music side of things? Oh, oh, well, um, wow, long time. I worked with uh, uh, uh -oh. Bobby. Sorry, oh. long time ago when I got to town. I worked with Bobby Matos and um, Ray Armando, and I must have been 18 or 19 years old. So I started getting into Montunos and listening and learning about clave and the different rhythms. And mm -hmm. then I worked uh, with uh, Sergio Mendez after that and, and learned from some of the, the older Brazilian musicians that were in the band. And then I've always had this this feel for it, you know, our, our affinity for it. I, I love Afro, I love rhythm. So Afro-Cuban music is really the source of everything. You know, it's mm -hmm. Africa by way of Cuba. The swing beat is from there by, you know, from Cuba to New Orleans, you know. Um, so um, it's part of our, our history, you know, and our, it's how, how the music came about. Um, then later on, I was in a band with Horacio, Brian Lynch, mm -hmm. Pedro Martinez, Delfani Terry, um, Robbie Amin, Carlis Del Porto, and we used to tour Japan as a group. We had records out. So that was really my deep dive because I'd be on the tour bus with these guys and they we'd play the, the whole three hour drive on the bus. You know, they'd be roombaing, you know, and I would, I would they gave me the clave and I'd, I'd be holding it down and listening while I'm playing. So, um, and then, and then uh, after that, um, the last two years, I've been writing a piece with Chucho Valdez. And um, his, it's a suite he wrote, and I arranged uh, based on the Orishas uh, that mm -hmm. came from Cuba to Cuba and um, the Santeria. Mm -hmm. And we did a piece based on the song cycle and um, premiered it last fall and going to go out again this fall and play some more. Cool. So... I'm curious music, about the yeah. Everything. Curious about your process, like um, when you're collaborating with someone, is digital files exchanged, or do you have to be with them in the room and improvising, or like this last one you talked about? How did you come up technically? 
Are you talking about the project with Chucho? Which last one are you talking about? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yeah. I yes. Mean, uh, you mentioned the one with Chucho. Yeah. Which in this case, because I don't speak much Spanish, um, and he doesn't speak much English. All those English is much better than my Spanish. Um, <laughs> so Chucho lives in Spain and in Florida. So we got together a couple times, and then. You know, it was done during the pandemic. So we're Zooming back and forth. He's sending me music. I'm sending him ideas back and forth. And, um, you know, in this day and age, this happens a lot. You know, we can mm -hmm. collaborate with anybody in the world. I, I, mixed, I just mixed a record um, using a, a program called Audio, where the engineer was in New York. And I'm here in my studio in L.A. And I'm, I'm hearing the mix as it goes down through his computer, you know, half a second delay it's, it's pretty incredible yeah. wow like right now it's like, i know it's like now exactly although i'm not so far Irvin barkley is in orange county a short drive from la so la fans of john beasley and of jazz please come down june 9th um that's a thursday night at eight o'clock tickets are available at the barkley.org so you like how I plug that and smoothly go into, um, we have some people who are wondering if you'll play. We're going to rehearse two days for this gig because we <laughs> want, we're so ready to play. And um, it's going to be hot. It's going to be fun, it's going to be loose. And no. um, you, you can even dance if you want. I mean, monkeys dance to jazz. There's no reason you can't dance to jazz. Wow. I wonder, I don't know about the audience here, but I'm sure the music will move them enough to do that. So guys, you are allowed to dance. Because you, you might, it? it's a theater, you know. Yeah, you can dance. We'll yeah, let them go. <laughs> and um, have you been to the theater? It's a small, intimate theater, so it's really fun. Um, we, we can see you like up close, you know, we'll f we definitely feel the music. The acoustics are really good. And maybe you can hang out and meet some of your fans in the lobby afterwards. It's that intimate. So again, I invite everybody. And because I don't want to take too much of your time, because like you said, you have so much going on. I am so thankful that you took the time to chat with us today. Um, it's a week, less than a week for your concert here in Orange County. Uh, can you play something for us? On the piano? Please? I see a piano behind you. Yeah. Hey, everybody, give us some hearts if you want John to play something. Okay, I got to see some hearts before I play. I know. There you go. There's one. How do you participation? <laughs> Just one? Come on. I see you. Brianna, Dan Grisky, Wood Hustle. There you go. There are your hearts. Thank you so much. They're coming in. Uh, oh. There you There's, go. That's the Trinity girl. You think she's from Trinidad? I don't know. Trini, tell us. You seem to know a lot about Moncastra and John yeah. Beasley, and it's so exciting. Oh, there's and another. Hi, Jane. <laughs> Jane Gillespie. Any kind of Dizzy, Dizzy Gillespie? Jane, are you related to Dizzy Gillespie? That would be crazy. Um, when, when the law rules. Uh, Look, hearts. Okay. We gave away some tickets to the California Jazz Society. Oh, did you? That would be fun. Yeah, they're going to come. Uh, they're going to come. We raffled them off. So that's going to be good. Oh, look at that. No, unfortunately, uh, not related. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play for peace. All right. Thank this you is so much. And then you can take us out or play as long as you want, whatever. We're here for you. But if you have to go, we totally understand. We will see you next week, June 9th, at the Barclay Theater. Thank you, everybody that has been watching this afternoon. And now I am so excited to introduce John Beasley on the piano. How's that? Beautiful. Like Love okay. it. This is a tune called Stevo that I wrote for my dear eccentric friend Steve Tabaloni. <laughs>
John Beasley, we are so excited to see you next week with Monkestra. Don't forget, you can still get tickets at thebarkley.org. And um, I want to thank you so much. These have been so fun these afternoons with world-class musicians such as yourself. And um, thank you for sharing your time and your talent. And we'll see you next week. Have an awesome weekend. Any last words, John? I hope to see you all next week and be, share a little music with you, brighten up your day, maybe think a little differently than before. You